What happens when you put a career-focused woman with two kids trying to balance home and work life in a room with a microphone? Lots of laughter, tears, and great advice. I'm Jill Devine, and welcome to Two Kids and a Career. My first TV guest on Two Kids and a Career from the local area, Channel 5, News Channel 5, KSDK, and NBC affiliate, I have Dana Dean and Allie Corey joining me. Hello, moms. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, Allie, you are an anchor on the morning show. Yes. Dana, you're a host of Show Me St. Louis, which is I describe it to people as like a lifestyle, yes. what's going on around in St. Louis, informational show. And all I- the fun things, basically just food, though. <laughs> but, but mostly food, yes. Yeah. I wanted to get you two on because I have this weird connection with both of you that you guys have no idea. You're like, what is she talking <laughs> I about? I love it. So let me, well, let's back up a second. Let's first talk about the kids. <laughs> Wait, what kids? <laughs> Dana, you have two. You have two boys. Tell me their names and their age. Jack is five years old and Deacon is one year old. And Allie, you're a brand new mama. Brand new mama. Kingston is almost five months old, which just blows I my mind. I can't believe that. Yeah. It's crazy. Okay, so I'll start with my connection with you, Allie. Okay. I met you when I was pregnant with my second. Yes. And you were pregnant, but you hadn't announced it yet. And then now all of a sudden I see you on TV. I'm like, she's pregnant. She was pregnant when she was in here. We could have totally talked it up. But I I understand. So how hard is that, by the way, that you have to wait 12 weeks to say anything? Oh, especially, you know, and, and, and you're, you know, you feel awful. Uh-huh. The symptoms are terrible. And people are like, oh, my gosh, what's wrong? You know, what you want to say is. Well, I'm nauseous and I want to throw up, but you're just like, I'm fine. I know. And, and when you're at gatherings and there's alcohol, you're like, um, I'm just not feeling it right, right. now. Yeah. I'm pregnant. Right. <laughs> you're gonna People look it. at me and they're like, she's lying. <laughs> <laughs> right. So then, yeah, you, Kingston's only, well, four months, four months younger than my daughter. So, yeah. yeah so that was our connection. Mm-hmm. Dana's is a little bit deeper because, well, Jack's five. My oldest is three. But then... You came back to show me St. Louis, and I think maybe one of your first days back, you opened up to someone, I can't even remember who it was, and you talked about how hard it was and Mm -hmm. how hard it was to have two. And in the midst of all this, I was pregnant. I was just getting ready to leave because she's nine months old, and I knew this podcast was coming because we had said, let's do it after maternity leave because, you know, you don't want to be gone for three months and not have anything. And I was watching you and immediately I said, I got to get her on because this is exactly why I started this podcast. Talking about things that we're not talking about. Why are we not having these tough conversations? And do you remember? I think it was my first day back and it was, you know, you feel uh, like your heart is outside of your body when you mm-hmm. come back to work the first day. Mm-hmm. Did you feel like that, Allie? Oh, my gosh, totally. I mean, and it, and I felt like I was walking on eggshells a little bit because, you know, when people come up to you when you're dealing with something inside and they say, how are you doing? You know, and they're mm-hmm. doing it because they're concerned about you. But then you're thinking about it even more and you, you're just trying to fight back tears and anxiety that you're feeling because, you know, I mean, it's so hard. It, it is so hard. It was really difficult um, to come back. The first time, especially. Oh, the first time is way worse. The hardest. And then the second time, it's still so hard, but you at least have experienced that similar feeling before. So you like, okay, I'm, you know, going to saddle up for this. I know I can get through it. Yeah. Uh, And then to go to, you know, turning on a computer and typing. Like, I did. I forgot how to type. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Like, my fingers weren't weren't moving fast. And I think there's a meme I saw on Pinterest of, like, a mom going back to work. And it's like, uh, this is how you feel. And it's like Big Bird sitting at, like, a (laughs) conference table. And you're Big Bird. And you're like, this is weird. Like, I shouldn't be here. Like, this, you know. Right. It's weird. Weird. And then I would joke, I'm like, does anyone need to be burped or need their diaper changed? <laughs> like, I can do that. Like, I am a professional at swaddling. Does anyone need to be swaddled? Swaddled Because that is the only thing I am capable of doing right at this moment. It's so true. Yeah. And I feel like the first time I really fully clothed myself and got ready and did my hair and makeup, yes. uh-huh. you almost have that feeling. I don't know if you guys had it, but a feeling of guilt. Like, 
I just spent all this time on myself and not with my child. I mean, that's oh, when the mom guilt really the mom starts. mom guilt is ridiculous. Because you go from, you're with them every single mm-hmm. second, you know, and then all of a sudden you're like, I need to do these things in order to prepare myself to get ready for work. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to work. And is my baby going to recognize me with my mm-hmm. hair done and makeup done? Because, you know, for our jobs... We really, I mean, you right. you put on uh, a face, a face, mm-hmm. and you know, hairspray, yeah. and you know, all at home. I'm like, did I brush my teeth today? Yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> Kingston's like, mom, your breath smells good. <laughs> you know, what's going on? It's a, you, it's a unique uh, job for sure. Um, mm-hmm. that, oh yeah, I have so many questions about that because I mean, the hours too, and. Dana, you did mornings. I did at one point. I did today in St. Louis. I was a reporter on um, today in St. Louis when I was pregnant with Jack. Uh-huh. And I don't know how you did that. Um, so I <laughs> would go out on the streets, you know, because you report you you're a live reporter on the streets. I would go all over, and I all I could think about was where is there a bathroom, and I. <laughs> Like, I would, like, go to my live report and be like, hey, where's the closest restroom? Because you have to pee hey, all the time right? when all you're time. pregnant. Yeah. Right. So mm-hmm. that's, that was really difficult. And then mm-hmm. coming back from maternity leave and, and being a reporter and wondering where you're going to pump. Mm-hmm. And that struggle is another level of, um, yeah. And with the deadlines and everything, you know, your your pumping schedules, they're going to fall off the map, you know. And then you're you're out of schedule. Um, it's a lot being a working mom. It's, it is. It's um. It's exhausting. And I will say the second time, um, you know, having gone through that with the pumping and the stress and all that, the with my second child, I was like, you know what, I'm I'm not going to do that. So I stopped at ten weeks before mm-hmm. I went back to work yeah. because I'm like, you know what, it's okay. Like I don't need to carry that mom guilt. No. Um, with me and I love, you know, and I support other women who do. And I think it's amazing. But I know for me personally, um, it it wasn't right for me the second time. Well, I'll say it right now. And I know that there's going to be someone that judges me and that person should not listen to this podcast because that's not what we're here for. Both of my girls have been on formula since day one. That was my choice. And you know what? Formula wouldn't exist if it wasn't safe. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't, or if it wasn't okay. Oh, right. Exactly. Right. That mm-hmm. was the choice I wanted to make. And it was, I, I'm, I have no regrets about it. Mm-hmm. And I can't believe that there would be someone that would say, you, and this happens, are a bad mom because you didn't breastfeed. Isn't that unbelievable? Oh, my goodness. I have, you know, it's, I even still, <laughs> I still get like people who, I had a woman who came up to me recently i was uh before deacon was one i was feeding him a bottle now he's on sippy cups you know but i was feeding him a bottle and someone came up to me and said is he a breast baby and i'm like why why would you, why is that ask, okay for you to why would yeah. you ask me that and then the other thing somebody asked me when i was pregnant i think it was with the second with charlie that she said are you going to breastfeed and i said i don't think so she goes Oh, but you lose a lot of weight. And I'm thinking, oh, that's oh, the so reason the breastfeed. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. and I, and, you know, I felt a lot of guilt about this for so long. Again, this mom guilt thing, I, it's, I just, I don't want it. But it, it creeps it happens. in. It totally No matter does. what. Mm-hmm. So I still, you know, do get, even though, like, again, Deacon's on whole milk now and, and not even it's not even a thing anymore right it's not even a, a, my stage but i still am like oh man I, I do feel guilty why do i feel like this but so again a meme i'm going to bring up another meme i saw one that said you know fed is best and oh yeah i'm like mm-hmm. yes amen like it doesn't matter it does not matter and no, no i don't judge anybody for their choices i just i can't fathom how now that i'm a new mom how moms could tear down other moms I mean, shouldn't we be in a tribe together? Shouldn't we be lifting each other up? We're not all the same. We're going to yeah. make different choices. You're going to do what's best for you. You because have to support each different. other. Because everybody's different. Yes. And so is every baby. Like, that's yeah. the thing. I mean, we joke around all the time about my husband and I love sleep and our <laughs> babies don't. Do you know how hard that is? Oh, my for, gosh. I mean, so... Some people have great sleepers, and that's awesome, and some people don't. So we do what makes sense for us in certain situations. Some people say, why are you rocking your baby to sleep? That's not your home or your life. Right. This is ours. Mm -hmm. And, And again, that's one of the reasons why I started this podcast, because 
it's nice to hear that your thoughts are the same. I want to bring up something that's topical when we go back to judging and why people say the things that they do. Obviously, with you two being on TV, you're going to get a whole lot more than someone like me. And it dawned on me that, Allie, I commented on your co-anchor, Rennie's post when, and I hate to bring this up, but I think it's such a teachable moment, when you got the um, awful Mm -hmm. comment from a viewer about your maternity dress. Yes. That brought tears to my eyes Mm -hmm. because... A woman's body when she's pregnant is so beautiful. And I never appreciated it until I was pregnant. And somebody, I'm trying, I can't remember who it was that we did talk about this on this podcast. She said, it's one of those things when you see a woman in the, in wherever and she's mm-hmm. pregnant, you just smile at her because you're, you're like, like oh. oh, there's a baby growing inside right. you. You know, it's so amazing. I don't amazing. miss the nauseated feeling I had all day and some of that other stuff, but that is such a joyous time. Oh, so it is. Can you walk me through that again? What happened? So um, being on TV, be, not even being pregnant, I mean, you get a ton oh, of unsolicited comments. But look, I mean, Dana and I, we get it. You sign up for that when you're on TV. Like, people don't really see you as a person. They see you as... Um, how would you explain it, Dana? Like, yeah, they don't think you're, you're a person uh, and with feelings. Yeah, I'm like, right. I'm just a normal person. Trust me. Yeah, we're totally normal for the most part. <laughs> I mean, you're a little weird. <laughs> yeah, a little, a little weird. weird. <laughs> but so you know, you get those comments all the time, and you, we kind of teach ourselves over the years, like you cannot let them get to you because if you if you let every negative comment that you got get to you, I mean, it would tear you down. Right. So you start to just kind of like. You see it and you don't let yourself read it and then you just kind of delete it, you know. But this one, it was probably because I had fire in me because I was pregnant. I read it and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. And what she said, basically, you shouldn't be wearing that tight of a dress, right? So, I mean, you know, the typical maternity dress is a tent, right? So I, you know, I actually wore a lot of the dresses that I had already worn that were a little more stretchy. And that was one of them. And it had a belt at the top. It was right over the bump. Right over the bump, you know. And, um... It was in like a four shot or something where you could see me turn to the side. So obviously a side view, you see the whole bump. And the comment was like, um, tight belted dresses look ridiculous on pregnant women, pregnant women. Or no, she said another word like to describe people with disabilities. And then she said, um, the side view is disgusting. That's how she described it. And I'm like, that was the part that just kind of hit me. Like, how could you ever say that like a pregnant belly is disgusting? You know? So I thought about it. You know, it was one of those moments where you're like, All teachable right. moment. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? This is affecting me a lot more than I want it to. Why? So then I thought about it and I'm like, I'm going to share this. And normally we just delete them. You know, yeah. we, we share them with each other in the newsroom. Like, oh, look at this comment I just got, you know, and that's kind of how we deal with it and vent. But this time I'm like, no, because it's always women who tear down other women. It wasn't a guy saying that, you know, my pregnant belly looked. It was another woman who may have been a mother herself. I don't know who said that. It's like, how in the world, you know, Yeah, I got two voicemails from women saying that your face is getting bigger, bigger. Yeah. Those are from women. I did get a, a male uh, emailed me and this was really weird. I was 10 <laughs> weeks pregnant and hadn't told anybody, but I wore like a bigger shirt because it was my second and so I popped earlier. Oh, yeah, totally. But I, like, I really don't think pe- anyone could tell. It was just right. like a little but looser. He said something. So this man emailed me and he he said, are you pregnant? Uh, you know what I say? Eat it today. Wear it tomorrow. Like, uh, you know, and I, being just mm-hmm. saying that I looked bigger, basically, is what he said. And I couldn't handle it, just being pregnant and the stress of that. So... Um, I had that, that man blocked from my email, uh, because I didn't, I couldn't respond because I was, yeah. I, and I didn't want to get an email from that person again, because it was so, um, oh, it's so disgusting. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I would never, ever comment on such a m- topic like that in such a mean way. Right. Why? I, I don't understand. Or leave a voicemail. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we do get on the radio side. I've. There's been several negative comments mm-hmm. about me and I mean, everybody I work with and people will call and it's really funny because they'll call and they'll 
yell something at you and then hang up. And it is hiding behind everything. And you had to get tougher skin. I get it. But I just, there has to be something wrong with these individuals. I I just don't get the pleasure of going and hurting someone's feelings. Or do they not understand that? And that's that's kind of part of the way that I handle it. I don't know how you handle it, Dana. but um, And I tell, you know, new girls who come in and get messages and I see how it affects them. And I say, look, listen, you have to think about the person who is sending you that message. They went out. They sought out your Facebook page. They figured out how to write you a message so that they could just spew hate. Feel bad for that person. Don't let it affect you. And I think that that's something that you have to take with you whenever someone is mean or does something wrong to you. Put it back on them. Yeah. What's that person going through? I mean, they've got to be going through something in order to be that cruel to someone. So after I did that commentary, I mean, the amount of support that I got from St. Louis and the moms, I mean, people were furious that I got that comment. So I kind of panicked because I thought the last thing that I want is for them to find who the woman was and then lash out at her because I'm not trying to get people to go bully her. That's not the intention at all. And I went to go find the comment and she'd already deleted it. So Mm. I wonder if maybe she did look at it again and say that wasn't right or, you know, not cool. Well, well, hopefully with her, maybe something Let's just give their benefit of the doubt that maybe something happened and she was in a bad mood and she took mm-hmm. it out on you. That's not OK. But maybe this was a lesson for her. Like, oh, my gosh, think before you type or speak. Mm-hmm. Mm. OK, let's go back to mommy stuff for you two. Since you are a new mom, Allie, Dana, did you give Allie a lot of advice or did she come to you or? Oh, my did gosh. You- <laughs> Dana gave me so much. She gave me maternity clothes. <laughs> She came over to my house with food right after he was born, and that was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you well, just And that was her? a moment when I was kind of low. I was just, like, in sweatpants every day. I'm like, Dana, you look so beautiful. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so sweet. Um, what did I say? I don't know. I it, I try not to give out advice unless people ask. I'm the same. But I may have done that, so I apologize if I gave advice that wasn't asked for. Um so I don't know. Do you remember? <laughs> no, you. Cause, I mean, we. So we all have a dressing room, mm-hmm. you know. So, um, and Dana's usually getting ready like every time I'm going in there because I had to go pee so often <laughs> that I would be like going in there and Dana would be like, "Go, go, go!" You know, like she knew that I needed to use the bathroom, but it was more just like me asking her a lot, like, "Was this normal? What should I expect with this?" We talked about like labor and what I should expect. I want to be a mom who's there for other moms. Um, because there were moms who were there for me uh, with my first, and I'll never forget those women. Most people aren't there, and maybe it's partly, you know, my fault because you didn't open up to people and tell them you were having a hard time, but I want to be there for others mm-hmm. and just let them know, you can ask me anything. Like, I am an open book when it comes to being a mom and, like, yeah. what you go through. I mean, why not? Why filter that? If you two didn't know I won't get into the whole thing. You can go back to season one and listen to episode one, the launch, why I started this podcast. But it was to sum it up. Our first daughter came along. We already had a baby, a fur baby, and her name was Apple. And she was our baby. She was a member of our family. And so at one point I was rocking our oldest, Lou, and I just didn't want to do it anymore. And I wanted to to, I could see Apple off to the side Mm -hmm. And like, all right, Sad. what's happening? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to go be with her. And I had texted someone these feelings and she didn't respond. And I, I I don't truly think that she was like, oh, you're I think she was busy with a newborn, too. And I got to work and I talked to somebody about it. She said, that's a normal feeling that that was your first baby. Mm-hmm. And and then it was really crazy because then we did a complete 180 where then it was she didn't. It was like, I don't have time for you. And then I thought, oh, I'm not an animal lover because I don't have time for you because I'm taking care of humans. Right. And they're more important. Mm -hmm. And then you have that struggle. And so I know, Allie, you just lost your fur baby right before Kingston came. I mean, it got to the point where my husband and I would refer to Diesel so much that people thought it was our actual like human child. Um, he went everywhere with us, you know, and yep. in the end, um, he had cancer. So anytime we had to travel, if we could drive, we drove. And I'm talking like we went to Minnesota in two days and drove eight hours there and eight hours back. I mean, he was our child. And then he got 
pretty sick, like towards the end of my pregnancy and passed away like four months before Kingston was born. I mean, we were rocked, totally rocked. And then I had the guilty feelings. And I remember calling my sisters and telling them, and they both have two kids and saying, you guys, I just, I don't know if I'm going to love this baby as much as I love Diesel or as much as I loved Diesel. The first time mom, I didn't know the feeling of what it was like holding your child for the first time, but I knew how much I loved Diesel and how much I missed him. And they were like, oh, Allie, <laughs> you're going to be <laughs> you're going to be fine. Like one of my friends said the thing about animals, because she's a huge animal lover, is they love you unconditionally yeah. no matter what. The thing about babies is you give them all their love. And then maybe once they're like 18, they'll start to thank you. <laughs> and I was like, so true. Okay, so, I mean, that didn't necessarily help me that much, but I totally see where you're coming from, Jill. I mean, we struggled. I, I wasn't sure how I was going to deal with, you know, having the baby and not having Diesel there. Yeah. And then I couldn't wait for Kingston to come because I was like, I can't deal with this anymore. Our right. house was so quiet. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And then speaking of the how can you love your child, Dana, I'm, I think every mom does this when they're getting ready to have their second. I was like, how am I going to love my second? Like, I love my first. I cried all the time over that. And everybody kept saying, just wait, there's room in your heart. Did you feel that way? There sure is. Yeah, I felt that exact same way. And uh, it's unbelievable, you know, the (laughs) amount of love you have for both of them. And it's just the same, even though they're so different. Yes, so different. Could not be more different, actually. (laughs) Now you guys make me want to get pregnant again. I'll tell you what, (laughs) it is fun. It is really fun. So... Our daughters are two years and three months apart, and it's really fun to see the relationship. And But I got to tell you, those toddlers, they give you a run for your money. Mm. I mean, I don't, I, and this goes back to emotions too and the love and the mom guilt. Do you go through this? I know you have to, but I have to just ask, do you go through this like, I got to go get a pedicure to get away from you. Mm -hmm. And then you're sitting in the chair and you're like, I can't believe I am. I wanted to say I wanted to get it. I want to go back. Mm-hmm. And then you go back and I'm like, I want to go back to the pedicure. It is a mind blowing. Yeah. I, Motherhood I, is weird. It mm-hmm. is so weird. It's weird. You want them to sleep, but then you miss them when they're sleeping. It's so true. We were talking about memes. So I saw a meme the other day that I, I feel like explained it perfectly. It was like, how dare you drive me insane every second I'm with you and make me miss you like crazy every second I'm not with you. It is so <laughs> true. It is so true. Or when they're flailing in the car seat and you're like, oh my God. Get me out of okay, this so car. Yours, your oldest is three. Yeah. So you're in, you're in the thick of it. Oh, yeah. What do they call it? The three na- three, three major years? It's real. It is harder than two for Just, a lot of kids. You give it to me, Dana. Give it's it to me. Hurt. Well, two and a half to three and a half was was so, so difficult. Uh, I have so many stories. <laughs> I and feel like, like Dana's trying to, like, filter what she's saying. I am right trying now. to filter because I'm like, I don't know if Jack's going to listen to this in 10 years and be like, Mom, why did you say that about me? Uh but oh gosh yeah i'm kind of <laughs> holding back um but i would cry on the way to work uh a lot between that time for one year probably cuz my husband worked the morning shift so i did the mornings alone getting jack to daycare and he um let's see uh, spirited strong-willed those are the words to that many use to describe uh you know certain types of toddlers so I had um, I had a strong-willed toddler, and I just want to encourage other moms going through this um, because he's now five years old, and he is really like out of that crazy stage where you're like, oh my gosh, like who is this? What did I do? What did we create? Like you know, this is really hard. So I have many stories about uh, the morning drop-offs. Um, no, that are so difficult. I'm so scared. <laughs> Uh, it, well, and <laughs> with my husband's job, I have to do everything. I'm by myself in the morning with the two girls, and God love him. He has been off this week, and he's seen it. And you can tell after like ten minutes, he's like, "Oh, oh my gosh!" I go, "This is every day," and he's just <laughs> looked like he's like, "Oh, I need to, I need to reset. Right. I need to, right. you know," because just yesterday, and he called me after I got on the road, the oldest would not give me a kiss and would not tell me she loved me. And that 
does not happen very often. And I said, okay, I'm leaving. You're not going to give me a hug or a kiss. And she just, oh, my gosh, so much sass. And I was, like, crying in the car. Like, she Devastated. Right. Yeah. And then he called me and he said, she ended up being fine. Everything was good. I'm like, yeah, but do you understand what that felt like? She would not tell me she loved me or give me a kiss right. or a hug. Right. Oh, it, it messed up my day. Yeah, and I'm not looking forward to those. You times. know, this is sorry, all, Allie. This is I know. I'm just gonna just, keep. I'm not gonna let him go. I'm sorry. just gonna keep snuggling him. Don't grow up. <laughs> you know, I get to work at eight o'clock in the morning, and you know, when all this happens before your day begins, and then you walk in the office, and you're like, "My, I have had a day. It's mm-hmm. already been a day, and, yeah. and I am getting to work." Right now. At 8 in the morning. But I've already had a day. Right. <laughs> and it's starting now, technically. So you kind of have to, ooh, separate that mm-hmm. because it, yeah, that's real. Like I said, I cried for a whole year on the way to work pretty much every day because it, the drop-offs were so hard. And one oh. thing I do, and some people, and and if either of you don't do this, it's totally fine. But for me to cope throughout the workday, because I, yes, I miss them constantly. I try not to think about them when I'm at work. hmm that's hard to do, but I try not to pull up pictures and look because I want to be focused. I want to get my job done and I want to get home to my family. Right. And if I'm constantly worrying, it takes me off of my game for sure. And so then when I'm at home and I didn't do this before kids, I try to keep work at work. Mm-hmm. And it's very hard to do, yeah. but I'm learning they see what I'm doing. They notice. They pick it up. So let's just try to, to yeah. figure it out. It's a skill to be 100% present. I don't know how anybody can say they are. No, yeah. it, it's a skill. Mm-hmm. And you try to be the best version of yourself for your children. It's hard. It is. You know, but I, oh, I want that so badly. Mm-hmm. You know, when I come home from work to to be that. Disconnect and I mean, obviously, I mean, it's not realistic, but right. I do want to do that (laughs) yeah to just try to at least just make a conscious effort because I always say I don't want to miss out on things and I don't want that to be a regret and that's what I'm currently struggling on in the moment as a mom like making sure I'm 100% present I'm 100% there and working on that with them as well and just not worrying about the phone or if Mm-hmm. Hey, come and play with me. Like, play. Right. right. I know. That's a struggle. I've noticed that since I've become a mom that, like, you know, I do not want to be at work any longer than I need to be, you know? Amen. And you find yourself, or I have found myself, and I feel guilty about this, too, so maybe we can just tack on, like, coworker guilt, too, is... I just want to, like, keep my head down and get my work done, and I don't want to, like, have outside conversations, and I feel yes. like an awful human being no. because I find myself, like, talking to a coworker, and I'm looking at my watch, like, okay, so I only have, like, 30 minutes to get the rest of this story done right. so I can get out of here on time so I can get home and get a nap so that right. I can go pick up Kingston on time, and it's like... You're thinking about those things the whole time, and I'm not. You talk about being present. I'm not present at all because my mind is like a ticking clock, like... I got to get this done by this time. I can't have any outliers come in here because those outliers are going to mess up my my clock. Yeah, and how do you say that? And I'm struggling with the same thing. Like, I I don't have time to talk like I used to. It's just no offense to the husband before. You know what I mean? Like, it's different. But when especially at night when you have maybe an hour, two hours in my situation, it just... I got to go. I got to get my stuff done and I got to go. And I don't need anybody to hold me back. And it doesn't mean I don't care for our friendship. It's just different. It's different. Yeah. It's absolutely It's so different. different. Yeah. It's very efficient. Like you're yes. right. <laughs> you're like a machine almost. <laughs> Being a mom <laughs> makes you like so efficient. Like I can do laundry and like wash the dishes at like 5 a.m. And I'm like. While who? brushing your teeth. I'm like who <laughs> am I? And what like 30 seconds. Become? It's like a timed thing. Right. Like I have about 20 minutes to get all these things done and I'm going to get them done. Yeah. And then some days I'm like, wow, I am a super mom. And then other days I'm like, I am a complete wreck. Failure. You know, and it just goes back and forth, back and forth. Those are the days when I'm so tired that I feel like I'm not fully present for anything in my day. You know, that you're just like, everything that I did today was, it was just half done. It wasn't, it it wasn't done well, you know, and then you go to bed at night and you're like, I got to make tomorrow a better day. Right. I, I feel like, 
you always have that guilt of not performing at your top. Yeah. And you're I not guess not going to be able to do that every day. I guess we just have to praise those days that we do. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, ladies, we got you got to come back in. We have so much more that we need to talk about. So oh let's just, you know, put it on the calendar. You'll be back in a few weeks. Sounds good. <laughs> we'll tackle yes. some more uh, hard things. I think just listening to both of you speak and just talking it through, obviously this stuff is not going to go away. The mom guilt's not going to go away. But my hope is there is someone listening right now. There is a mom listening who is struggling. She is crying on her way to work or crying on her way home from work because of something this that she knows she's not alone. And I think that's the biggest thing, knowing that I'm not alone in my feelings. Maybe, Dana, you don't have the same feeling, but you do, Allie, or mm-hmm. vice versa. Just knowing there is one other person that understands, I just think makes a huge difference. Yeah. We're not perfect. Nope. None of us are. Even though Instagram can oh, make it yeah. look that way, it's it's a whole different story. When you peel back the curtain. Absolutely. And we just got to start being more real. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ladies. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and if you're feeling really generous, write me a review. And don't forget to join me next week for a new episode of Two Kids and a Career.